What's good everyone, it's 23MJ88 back with another video today, and for today's video we're going to take a look at the performance review for the Puma MB1. Alright, just to start things out real quick, we're going to take a look at the box for the Puma MB1. As you can see here, it's kind of a galaxy print all over the box. There is a translucent portion on the top of the box here. It says, not from here, subject 1, mellow, and then here is the size tag for the box as well. So just a quick few details on the Puma MB1. As you can see here on the upper, there is some stitch work here that looks like feathers along the heel. And then on the heel, it does say mellow with the Puma. You have the Puma stripe logo. And then on the tongue, it does say one of one with wings that say MB at the base with the one going through. And it does look like a halo at the top as well. And then at the base of the tongue, it does say not from here. And then on the bottom of the shoe, it says rare golden child on the pivot point. And then it does say one of one on the heel as well. So as far as the traction on the Puma MB1, you have a radial kind of circular nub pattern on the forefoot and it does say rare. And then on the heel, it is a diamond pattern with slits through it. And then the nubs again on the Heel. As far as the traction goes on these, they were really reliable. I barely had to wipe on a clean floor. On a dirty floor, they did pick up dust, you know, every three or four plays I was wiping, but I really never slid out at all. It's a very reliable traction pattern, and I actually found it to be very durable as well because with the LeBron 19s and the Kobe NXT 360, the nubs actually wore away pretty quick. The rubber compound on here is pretty firm. And uh, I just found it to be a very reliable traction pattern and it did have a very loud squeak and just an overall great bite. So as far as the traction goes on the Puma MB1, I thought it was great and actually a lot better than what Nike currently has to offer for translucent outsoles. So I would have to give these a very solid 9.5 out of 10. So as far as the cushion goes on the Puma MB1, it does come with an ortholite insole. So the step in comfort right off the bat is rather nice. And then... The midsole foam is actually nitro foam. It is caged with this plastic TPU portion on the lateral side, but on the heel, as you can see, it is not caged and on the medial side as well. And at first I did find it to be a little bit dense right out of the box, but after playing in these, I don't know what it's been eight or nine times now for about 20 hours, they did break in rather nice and it actually has a nice bounce to it. And I actually really enjoyed it. In the past, I've really been hesitant to play in basketball shoes that are only foam. I've always enjoyed Zoom or Air Max, and I was a little hesitant to play in these, but I will say that I did really enjoy it. And like I said, it does compress nicely in the heel especially, and it was actually quite an enjoyable experience. So I really enjoy Nitro Foam. It kind of reminded me of React, honestly. Um, it just provided that nice bouncy feeling, and it hasn't become dead at, at all as far as the foam goes. So as far as the cushion on these, honestly, I'd have to give these a pretty solid 7.5 out of 10. One thing that will be interesting moving forward is if this nitro foam actually stays bouncy moving forward or if it will become kind of dead like Lunar has in the past. I did say it reminds me of React, but moving forward, it will be interesting to see if it kind of holds up over time. And then as far as the heel to toe transition, I found it to be rather smooth. Like I said, it doesn't compress much in the lateral side, but on the heel, all the way to the toe. It was kind of a nice uh, transition. Um, it didn't really feel clunky at all. I think if they would have wrapped this TP wrap around the heel, it would have been, but they kind of left it uncaged. So I actually really enjoyed the heel to toe transition on the Puma MB1. So as far as the materials go on the Puma MB1, you do kind of have a textile mesh on the back here. Really nothing special. It does take some break in time, especially at the ankle collar. It is rather stiff right from the get go. But moving forward, you have a screen mesh here on the toe, which is very durable. And then you have the fuse portion on the toe that wraps around to the medial side. And then as well on the eyelets, there's some extra reinforcement with the fuse portions on all the eyelets going down. Like I said, it's really nothing special. It's actually a rather cheap setup, but it does work. So like I said, there is a little bit of break in time and with the materials as well this shoe is actually really hot there's really no breathability with this shoe the tongue is mesh 
but it's a very thick tongue. So the shoe can get rather hot, you know, after about an hour to an hour and a half of playing in them. But as far as the materials go on the Puma MB1, they are kind of like that 2010, 2011 era of Nike with the fuse and the mesh. Um, a rather cheap setup, but it does work nice. So as far as the materials go, I'd have to give these a decent 7 out of 10. As well with the materials, there is a synthetic leather on the tongue, as you can see with the one of one logo and then the wings logo on the mid portion of the tongue as well. So my size 10 and a half in the Puma MB1 come in at a weight of 16.95 ounces. So as you can see here, it's not an overly light shoe, but not extremely heavy either. So as far as the fit on the Puma MB1, they do run true to size. I will say they are a little bit narrow as you can see in the forefoot here. So if you are a really wide footer, I would go up half a size because it's a really snug fit. My toe was basically right at the end here, touching the end, right where I like it. And there was really no movement within the shoe. Once you clamp these laces down, it is a traditional lacing system. And then at the bottom, you do have these two eyelets that do run into the footbed. So as long as you clamp these laces down, you're really gonna be locked down in the shoe. There's really no movement within the shoe, which is nice. There is a little bit of break in time, but as far as the fit goes, like I said, it is true to size and it does kind of fit like a Kyrie, honestly. And I really enjoyed the fit of these. So like I said, if you're a narrow or semi wide footer, I think you should be able to get away with true to size. But if you are overly wide, I would go up at least half a size. As far as the fit on the Puma MB1, I would have to give them a decent eight and a half out of 10. One thing I wanted to notice as well with the overall shape of the shoe, it does remind me of the early Kyrie models, like, you know, the Kyrie 1 and the 2s. It does have that same curvature. And then on the outsole as well, the traction pattern does come up ever so slightly on the side of the shoe. And then on the medial side as well. So it just kind of gives me those Kyrie vibes. But I think this is a fantastic basketball shoe, especially at that price point they're at. They might just be the best budget basketball shoe out right now. So as far as the support goes on the Puma MB1, you do have an internal heel counter for the heel, and then you have this kind of plastic TPU plate on the side. It's kind of in an X pattern, and then a rubber outsole that wraps up the side. And these kind of work in sync to harness your foot in on lateral movements, and they do a fantastic job. It doesn't wrap up too high where it's gonna cause any pain for your ankle, but it does wrap up just enough with your foot sitting kind of within this midsole just a little bit to do its job. And then in the forefoot as well, you do have these two eyelets that do run down into the footbed. And when you make lateral cuts, those kind of harness your foot in the shoe as well. So as far as support on the Puma MB1, I found it to be great. It was a very supportive shoe. It is a mid cut as well. Um, I believe there are some low tops coming out in spring 2022. But as far as the support goes on the Puma MB1, I would have to give it a solid eight and a half out of 10. All right, so that's gonna cover it for today's review on the Puma MB1. This is a shoe I would actually really recommend. Um, it's a budget-friendly shoe coming in at around 120 American dollars, 145. It has very good traction. The traction's very durable. And honestly, I didn't really have to wipe at all. And then the cushion's pretty nice as well. Again, for 145 Canadian, you really can't go wrong. I will mention though, it does get a little hot with these materials, the mesh and the textile mesh in the toe box. But as far as a budget-friendly shoe, and it is a signature shoe, and, and LaMelo Ball's first signature shoe, I would say if you can get your hands on a pair, I know there is a black and blue pair coming out uh, February 2nd, and then February 18th for All-Star Weekend, there is a mismatched red and green pair. Um, but if you can get your hands on these, I would say it's a go. Um, again, this is actually my first time playing in a Puma basketball shoe, but I was very impressed and I think uh, the way LaMelo is playing basketball in these right now, um, I think this is going to be a very popular shoe, especially at that price point. I'm actually really happy I branched out and tried a Puma basketball shoe because moving forward I am looking forward to his next models and maybe trying some other basketball models from Puma. All right, so that's gonna do it for today's performance review. As always, if you could like, comment, and subscribe, that would help the channel out a lot. Stick around for the on-court footage at the end, and as always, we'll see you next time. Peace.
with the stars, I'm in sync with the earth. Ten toes deep, flower child from the turf. I never switch sides, like even when I die, I'm a ride for the squad, not a ties in the hearse. I've been on the vibe, kinda hard to describe. 